Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. DeJoseph here, back again. Welcome to our class. Take your seats, please. Thank you very much. Spit out that gum. Thank you. Um, take your hood off. Thanks. No hoods in school. You know the rules. Today, we are going to continue with our unit on form. Last time we did rounds, cannons, and fugues. I uh, hope you took the time to uh, listen to the listening examples. Some of them were pretty fun. Some of them were just nice music, right? And then I asked you to listen to the Bach fugue in G minor, uh, affectionately known as the Little Fugue. And uh, I asked you to list for me the instruments as they appeared with the theme. And if you remember the theme I gave you last time, actually that was one of the hints I gave you, which was uh, the theme goes bum, 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 bum. Ooh, that was a low one for me, okay. Uh, and I also gave you the hint that it started with the oboe, the oboe, okay. So, uh, I'm going to give you the answers right now. So if you want to just, you know, maybe pause the video, get out your doc that has your responses to it, and you can check to see how you did on this one, okay? So it started with the oboe. That was number one. Number two was the English horn. Now, I'm not going to blame you if you didn't get the one right. We didn't really talk too much about the English horn in class, but uh, if you maybe put the oboe again, I would have uh, accepted that because uh, the English horn kind of sounds like a deep oboe. It's a kind of like a slightly lower pitched oboe. Uh, after the English horn came the bassoon. That one was pretty clear. That one sounded very much like a bassoon. And then after that was another tricky one, the contra bassoon. Okay. It sounded like a bassoon, but again, much lower. So uh, we did talk about the contra bassoon in class. Uh, so uh, hopefully you got that. But if you notice here, it starts, it goes oboe, English horn, bassoon, contra bassoon. What do all those have in common? I'll give you, I'll tell you what. For the person or persons who can tell me what the oboe, English horn, bassoon, and contra bassoon all have in common, I'll give you a special shout out in the next video. Okay, I'll shout you out on the next video. So uh, comment, uh, but you know, send me a private comment on Google Classroom and tell me what do all those instruments have in common, those first four instruments, the oboe, the English horn, the bassoon, and the contra bassoon. What do they all have in common? Okay, moving on though. The next up, now a bunch of people put flute here for the next one but the flute comes in actually it doesn't come in with the theme the flute does come in here but it doesn't come in with the theme it comes in with an accompaniment part the next instrument to come in with the theme are the clarinets and the bass clarinets if you just put clarinets i would uh i mean this isn't graded anyway but uh if it was graded i would have given you full credit if you just put clarinets but it's actually the clarinets and the bass clarinets come in then comes the viola. Then after the viola, it's the cellos and basses. Then after that, it's the violins. After the violins, it's the uh, the last group to come in. And it's all the low instruments. It's the tuba, the trombone, the cello, the bass the timpani, basically low brass, low strings, and then accented with that low uh, percussion sound, that, that timpani sound. So uh, that's the whole thing. So once again, I'll do it real quick for you so you could check. It goes oboe, English horn, bassoon, contra bassoon, clarinet and bass clarinet, viola, cellos and basses, violins, Tuba, trombone, cello, bass, timpani, all together in one big group, okay? 
All right. So uh, how did you do? And did anyone get a hundred? I'd be actually. I'd be, it was kind of. It, this was a tricky one. So I'd be surprised if anyone got uh, them all correct. Did anyone get them all correct? Did anyone get maybe most of them with just one or two wrong? If so, congratulations. You did a great job. Okay. And if you didn't get any of them, well, I'm sure some people. I, I don't think anyone got them all wrong, but. Uh, if you got maybe like less than half correct, that's okay, you know, but this this was a really tricky one. So good work. Love to see it. We're going to move on now with the next uh, section. Our next three forms that we're going to learn. Binary, ternary, and rondo form. Let's check them out. First up. Binary form, also known as a B form. And why do you think that is? It's because in this type of form, we have two distinct sections of music. We have an A section and we have a B section. It's in two parts. Uh, now, these two parts can occur only once. So you can have one big long A section and then one big long B section and then it's over. But much more commonly, this will repeat. So you'll have A, B, A, B, A, B until the song is over, okay? A lot of pop music is written in binary form and you could probably imagine why that is, right? Because in pop music, a lot of times what you'll get is you'll get this alternating verse chorus structure to the song. And actually, when you get into seventh grade, we'll dive a lot more deeply into pop song form because it's not always that simple, but a lot of times it is. Uh, you'll get verse, chorus, verse, chorus, verse, chorus. And what differentiates a verse from a chorus? Well, you get new music, right? The verse is one melody, generally, and then the chorus is a completely different one. And in a lot of pop music, you'll alternate between those two. And this is a style of uh, a type of binary form, okay? So for example, the song Let It Be by the Beatles, it starts out with a, um, I realize my, my big fat head is blocking the, uh, <laughs> the, the part of this sentence here. But the song Let It Be by the Beatles starts out with a piano intro or introduction. And then the rest of the song uh, continues in binary form. Check out the link below. Listen to the song Let It Be by the Beatles that I have provided for you here. And you'll be able to hear. It will start out with a piano intro. And then it has the verse, when it comes in times of trouble, Mother Mary talks to me, singing words of wisdom, let it be. And then the chorus will come, let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be. Don't make fun of my singing. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Ternary form. Okay. This is a little bit more complex. It's also known as ABA form. And it is sometimes affectionately referred to by yours truly as Oreo cookie form. And why is that? Well, because think of an Oreo cookie in your mind. Imagine one. Maybe you don't have to imagine. Maybe you're eating Oreo cookies right now. If so, please share some with the rest of the class. Thank you. What does an Oreo cookie look like? Chocolate, cream, chocolate. Two things that are the same, and then one thing that's different in the middle. All right? An A section, followed by a B section, followed by the return of the A section. A, B, A. Most of the time when you see ternary form, it's going to be in the world of classical music, especially if we're talking about things like sonatas and da capo arias, okay? If uh, you are familiar with the great work by the uh, 
Baroque composer George Friedrich Handel, his great oratorio known as the Messiah, where you get that uh, hallelujah, hallelujah. That's not in ternary form, but another famous aria from that is, which is called The Trumpet Shall Sound. So I'll, I'm going to link that one below too, so you could hear um, The Trumpet Shall Sound. That's written in ternary form. Also, all sonatas are also in ternary form because you, in sonatas you get three distinct sections. You get um, the exposition, that's the first A section. You get the development, that's the B section. And then you get what's called the recapitulation and uh, or the recap for short. And what does recap mean? Recap means bring back the first thing, right? So uh, exposition, development, recapitulation, A, B, A, okay? So that's a type of ternary form. But a song that you all know that is in ternary form is the great uh, melody known as uh, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. Twinkle, twinkle, little star is in ternary form. Think about it. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. That's what we get first. And we get the same thing at the end, right? Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Same exact words, same exact melody. And then what's in the middle? Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. That's the B part in the middle. A, B, A, ternary form. That's not the first time I've sang that song today, by the way. I just I just sang it to, as a lullaby <laughs> to my son. Okay. Are we clear on ternary form? Leave me a comment or send me an email if uh, you have any questions about that. Finally, rondo form. Not Rajon rondo form, okay? that's a, There's always someone who brings up Rajon Rondo. Actually, I'm not too sure. I mean, I know a lot of you guys like basketball, but I'm not uh, sure if uh, you're familiar with Rajon Rondo, who was a great point guard for the Boston Celtics for many years. I'm not sure if he's still in the league. I haven't. I don't really follow basketball basketball anymore. Actually, nobody does because it's canceled. Oh well. Um, but anyway, <laughs> I'm cracking Mrs. and Joseph up here. By the way. So what is rondo form? Well, quite simply, rondo is A-B-A-C-A-D-A -A -A form. What? What? A-B-A-C-A-D-A. -A -A. The key is that you keep returning to the A section. So you'll have an A section. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. You'll have the A section, then you'll have new, different music which you'll call the B section. And then the A section will come back. And then you'll have music that was different from those two sections called the C section. And then you'll have the A section will come back, right? And then you, you may have new music after that. And then the A section will come back. You uh, just have to keep coming back to the A, okay? Um, now let me, paint a picture in your mind here. See, at school, I have this wonderful smart board presentation where I have this whole thing laid out. But for now, you'll just have to picture this in your mind. You can even close your eyes if you want. I won't tell. Imagine you are coming home from playing outside, okay? When you walk into the house, you are in the living room. Let the living room be called the A section. You sit down and watch some TV for a minute and then you realize you're hungry, you want a snack. So you go into the kitchen to get your snack. Let the kitchen be the B section. After you get your snack, what do you do? Well, you want to you got want to eat your snack while you watch TV so you go back to the living room the A section after a while you need to go to the bathroom 
as we all do. So you go to the bathroom, let the bathroom be your C section. When you're finished, you go back to the bathroom and continue to watch, you, you go back to the living room and continue to watch TV, the A section, right? This is Rondo form. A, B, A, C, A. In some music, you even go upstairs. Maybe let upstairs be the D section. Maybe you have to go ask mom and dad something. They're in their room reading. You go to your parents' room, the E section. Maybe you go down to the family room, the F section, right? It doesn't matter. You could have as many sections, theoretically, in rondo form as you want or as, as the composer wants. You just have to keep coming back to the A section. And really, you need at least a C section for it to be considered rondo, right? Otherwise, it would be considered ternary. If you just went A, B, A, that's ternary. So you need at least a C and then go back to the A, and that's considered rondo form. But you could have D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P sections. That's fine. That's, that is acceptable. Now, I think probably, practically speaking, the most you'll see is like up to D. But there you go. Um, below, you'll see, I'm going to give you uh, two different examples of rondo form the first is the great march of the toreadors from bizet's wonderful opera carmen for familiar melodies um should be there for you and then also in rondo form is uh a non-classical piece a piece that you're probably familiar with, especially around uh, Christmas time. You, this is on TV a lot. It's the Linus and Lucy theme from the Peanuts. Okay, if you're a fan of Charlie Brown, Charlie Brown Christmas, uh, Charlie Brown uh, and the Halloween, the Great Pumpkin, right? You're familiar with this uh, uh, with this song, and that you might not have known until now that it's written in rondo form. So you can give a listen to that as well. Okay, now, uh, that's going to do it here for us today. In our next class, we're going to uh, do talk about a, a mystery form, a mystery form. And I'll, I'll see if I can get, get you guys to guess what it is, okay? Uh, but please let me know if you have any questions whatsoever about binary, ternary, or rondo form, or rounds, canons, and fugues for that matter as well, whatever, any questions that you might have. My office hours are every day from 1.30 p.m. to 2.15 p.m., Monday through Friday. Um, so far, no one has really uh, taken, uh, taken advantage of those office hours. I get, you know, little questions here and there throughout the day, <laughs> but never during my office hours. And, uh, uh, but if you're if you really need help, I'm here for you. That's what I want you to know. You know, the questions that I normally get, I'm able to answer like in one sentence, and those are fine. You know, please send those. But if there's anything that's really deeply confusing you about any of this, don't be afraid to uh, reach out. I'll do the best I can uh, to help you. And if we need to uh, hop on like uh, Google Hangout or something for just for a couple minutes, then I'm I'm cool with that too. Okay. Uh, but you just got to let me know, and then we can set it up. Otherwise, email and um, posting something on Google Classroom. I mean, for the people who have done it, you know that I, I'm really quick about getting back to you. So just let me know. I'm here to help. I literally have nothing else to do but help you. So, <laughs> um, But... Uh, well, you know, and raise my own two children. But besides that, all right. Uh, if there's no if there's no other questions, uh, just uh, sit quietly, please, at your desk until the bell rings. It should just be another minute. Goodbye. Goodbye.